Welcome to the Michigan Runner Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. I don't know if it's going to be fun, but I think it'll make the course a little bit interesting. There's a little more to focus on. I personally love running through cities. My main marathons have been in Chicago, where there's you know, buildings on either side. And that makes it um, just a little bit more interesting, so you have something to look at when you're just trying to focus on not hurting. Um, I will say that out there today, it felt like the, the buildings were kind of channeling that wind a little bit, so I think... Um, if you end up in no man's land, it's going to be a little bit more frustrating than it might otherwise be. And then uh, I think those hairpins are going to be really annoying, especially since everybody's in these really high stack height shoes. So taking those corners tight is going to be um, a little bit annoying. So I, I don't know. I do think it, you know having a little bit more of a technical course where you can, you know, it's not going to make the difference, but people who are paying attention to where you are in the race, whether it's uphill or downhill, or there's a turn coming up, to a little bit more aware of that. I think over. Over the course of a marathon, that's going to make things a little bit, could potentially make a little bit of a difference, which um, I think of myself as pretty savvy in that respect. So I'm hoping that turns out an advantage. We'll see. And anything else exciting to be boots on the ground here in Atlanta? Anything that is finally here? Uh, it's good to not have to think about it anymore. Um, and also, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to not have everything be consumed with either thoughts of the marathons or worried that I'm not thinking enough about the marathon. Um, also, I have some family here, so my cousin, my aunt and uncle, and then lots of family out. So after the race, we're staying here for a couple of days, hopefully get some good barbecue and some other stuff, and that will be enjoyable. And I'm just nice and sunny. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it. In the main press conference in there, the stage, we kind of give you the impression that you sort of got stagnant in the career. What were you trying to say there, sort of? Yeah, so my last year, year and a half, I was with the Hanson's Distance Project for four years, and um, for the last year and a half of that, my Achilles have been getting slowly and slowly worse to the point where for the, my marathon buildup, my track buildup, for that's 2016 trials, essentially every run, or every day from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed, and especially during runs, it was just constant pain. It never went away, and before that, I'd kind of been able to get to a place where I could kind of warm up, and that sort of pain, like, I'm decent with dealing with pain over a long period of time, but it just starts to, to wear on you, and you don't see any progress with it, and so between that and I was also a little bit frustrated that I wasn't seeing a ton of improvement in running, and I was also kind of getting older, and I have an engineering degree, and I wasn't really using that, so I, I felt like I had kind of... Yeah, gotten a little bit stagnant, I think would be a, a good way to do that. I was a little bit frustrated. Is this the right place for me? Is this the right kind of thing to be doing? So 2016, I really feel I felt like I needed to make a lot of changes, not just in running. Um, there were a bunch of other personal issues kind of going on at the same time. Uh, and then I ended up making some very significant life changes in the interim, um, which was a very painful process and a much longer process than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, I didn't do another race for three years, which I did not expect when I, I made the deal with myself after the 2016 trials that I'm not going to race again until I'm healthy, and I didn't realize that was going to be a three-year process. Um, but I think coming back, there's a new commitment to, to running fast. Um, you know, I don't want the amount of time and emotional investment that I put into coming back to have been wasted and the only way to make it not a waste is to actually do something with it and compete and, and put everything I can into these last few build-ups. Um, I'm, I'm 31 now and so it is likely that this is my last super competitive marathon trials and I don't feel like I've given everything I have to the last two I ran in and so you know, the, the mantra of this segment has been no more next times. Um, I'll try and leave everything, everything out there. And so, what? Can you give us a quick overview of the three years, like the timing, or so you leave Hanson's, like what? Yeah, so I left Hanson's surgery? in September of 2016. Uh, I moved home to uh, in Seattle for about eight months. Um, I then separated from my wife and moved in with my parents for a while, uh, and then late 2017, I uh, contacted Lee Troop. Um, during that interim, I think I tried coming back from Achilles injury. I think at that point, I was when I moved to Colorado, I was on my third try to return. So first time, it was just, we're going to do PT and stretching. Second time, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive with it. 
third time I got PRP, and so then I was in a boot for a little while, and I was trying to come back from that. So then, end of 2017, I moved out to Boulder, was still coming back, and then we had another flare-up, sort of February of 2018, I would say. Um, went back and forth with the doctors for a little bit. I got Achilles surgery for the Haglands in May of 2018. And then, let's say I didn't really return to activity. I think I started kind of doing runs and stuff and, and feeling like I was actually training probably around November. Yeah, October, November, probably. Um, and then from there, it was just a very long, slow build up to, to Chicago, I think. And you never thought about retiring? or? You oh, I you, considered you, a You haven't had a sponsor since 2016, right? Yeah, yeah. And. Um, one of the things that you need in order to be able to retire from running is something else to do. And um, so I have an engineering degree, but I didn't really use it when I was in Michigan. So I essentially had this big gap in my resume and I wasn't really able to find a lot of jobs for engineering. So I, I substitute taught for a while. Um, and I think the other big thing was sort of in that bit of turmoil, at the very least, training and rehab and just sort of the hope for running is kind of one constant I can kind of keep and maintain is sort of the, the last little bit of routine that I kind of have left. Uh, and so I think that got me through. And then also just the inertia that I've been doing this since I was 14 or 15 to not do it anymore would just be such a uh, just an odd gap. Um, but a lot of it was like, well, there's no engineering job, so let's go to grad school. Well, if we're going to grad school, that's something you can do and train at the same time, so let's keep doing that. And then when I chose Boulder, part of that was because I really wanted to work with Lee, and part of it was because they have a university right there in town, and it's at altitude, and so, um, yeah, continuing running was as much about well, I may as well as, yeah. And then we'll just kind of see how it goes, if I can get healthy. And the grad school was what? I'm in mechanical engineering, getting my master's. When is that done? Uh, I'm taking one class this semester because I want to be able to focus on uh, school. So I will have, I think, nine units to go at the end of the semester. Uh, and so I'll probably fall and then spring of next year. So I would imagine spring of next year. So I kind of turned a two-year program into a three-year program. And you, you mentioned the shoes. You're an engineer. Like, one, you ran so well in them. Like, how much of this improvement do you give to the shoes? And then looking for a new sponsor, does that create problems because you, you trust these shoes that you're in? Like, maybe you talk about that a little bit. Um, I don't know how much of a problem it creates for finding another sponsor. The, the biggest challenge of finding another sponsor is finding a sponsor that wants to sponsor me and actually give me some sort of um, compensation. Um, it was, I, I think, Lee was very much pushing, my coach Lee Troop was very much pushing to, to stick with these shoes just because we'd had success, we don't want to change too much of the formula going to the trials, um, especially because at that point it wasn't entirely clear that anybody would have their prototypes out in time. Um, I'm certainly open to wearing another company's shoes going forward. I think I stuck with the Nikes just because they had worked and I have a friend on the inside that was able to give me another pair. Um, sorry, what was the other question? Yeah, how much do you think of the two tables? Oh, uh, it probably helped a little bit. Um, I mean, they say it's a 4% bump, so I mean, we'll, we'll call it that. I know that I was certainly stronger than my time showed, and um, so I think I was in shape to run a fast time no matter what shoes I was in as far as how much it contributed. Do you think you should run faster than you did? Um, I think had there been a faster pack going that I could have run with. I think I could have handled that. Um, but I mean, I think everybody says that at the end of the race, but I felt I felt very good even after the pacer dropped off. I felt like I was one of the ones kind of dictating pace. And then when it came time to compete over the last couple of miles, uh, I felt like we were able to kind of drop those guys and feel in control of doing it. I didn't feel like I was being dictated to. I was one of the ones doing the dictating. So I think there was more potential there in that race. I would not like to think so. That's what I've been telling myself is still so. Are you wearing the Vaporfly or the Alpha Fly on Saturday? I'm gonna make the final decision tomorrow. Have you and have you worn the Alpha Fly yet? No, I'm gonna do some strides in it and we'll see how it feels. Um, I think I'm leaning towards it just because of kind of the results people have shown with it. Uh, but at the same time, my good uh, former good friend, former teammate Chris Derrick has decided to not do the Alphas and to wear the next percents and obviously he has a lot more experience with them than I do. So that is certainly making me maybe a little bit more 
I'm going to focus a little bit more on the differences that I feel. Um, it's especially going to come down to the kind of the, the fit and the feel underfoot. Um, I know there's a little bit of a weight difference, and, and lightweight is certainly a big factor that I take into account. Um, so I mean, we're going to put them on, put them in the strides, make sure that there's no um, no differences in kind of how the, the, the stride feels. Because one of the big noti things I noticed in just putting on the next percents is how it, it changes your stride just a little bit and takes a little bit getting used to. Uh, and so I think if the alpha flies are radically different in that sense, I may stick with the next percents just because I don't want to want to adapt to something new. Because I've, I've done a little She's bit of training. She's never worn them. I'm not. You know what, by getting blister or anything? Or? So I mean, what if it's a little bowling post here just so. I feel like I was capable of running top three, top, you know, I just, I didn't know anything what I was capable of until you get to the starting lineup, the first couple of loops. I never, I, I didn't see the course, I never studied for it, I just ran the course, basically, mm -hmm. like, I didn't even know what the first lap was, what the second loop was, I was just running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So we got a Masters runner on the Olympic team again. Oh. Masters runner, I'm an athlete. Yeah. Hey, what else? Well, yeah. How old are you? The 43 now? I'm 43 years old, yes, sir. That is phenomenal. Yeah. Well, this is one of your best times ever, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I don't know what time. Well, you ran right around 210 or 209? Something. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but, you know, I run well. Just, I don't know what I was just competing. Did you, did you change your training the last six months or same no, thing? You've no, 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 no. I, I, haven't, I haven't changed any training. All I did was the same thing I did, you know, a lot of my training partners are good runners. Right. I was I was able to keep up with them, so that gave me confidence. Where uh, where did you do most of your training over I, I, I trained in Ethiopia, I just have one. Where at? Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah. And so that all worked for you? And I worked perfect. And uh, did the wind or any of the weather bother you? Did Not you really. Bother no, you at all? no, weather didn't bother me at all. How did it feel out there? I mean, you know, times were great I, today. I feel, you know, I feel great. It was tough course. But then at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. You, you can't control the weather. You, you can't control the competition. You can control what you're capable of. You know, when Galen went, I knew Galen was, you know, he's a different level of runner than us. So I just make sure I was top three. That was the main goals. What does it mean to be the oldest U.S. Olympic marathoner ever? All this, I, that, that's nothing. That, that's not, uh, nothing to me, to be honest. I, I consider myself as an athlete. And that's the way I look at it, you know, just I trained for this one, it wasn't a fluke. I put the work, sacrifice, and dedication, so it wasn't easy, to be honest. Like, you see the, the fun part of it running here, but it was like three months of uh, hard training. It wasn't easy. What do I mean the first five time track? What's up? First five time track. Oh, this is amazing. I mean, accomplishment, that's something I was dreaming about, and that's... And that was my motivation, to be honest. You know, I want to do something that's never been done before, and people count me out. You know, just I want to come out. And people, they have, they have, they have like a, they have like, they have right to their opinion. That's the one thing. They can, they can say whatever they want to say, but also I can do what, what I'm capable of doing. So you know, just you can listen to them and you can make fun of me. I'm the oldest guy. All the just for picking me this year. So it's a good job, man, for picking me. <laughs> yeah, but you can talk about the last quarter mile or half mile. You were looking back. Right? Like, I little was there, but I just want to tighten the screw up. I knew, like, and I was paying attention how he was running. He wasn't running well in the hills, so I just make sure I put some, you know, I just make sure I put some here, some uh, some space between me and him when I get to the hills. And when I when I get the last 600 meter, I thought he was coming. I just, you know, you I still just, you still got that speed. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. He'll be back at the press conference, all right? Okay, thank you. Hey, congratulations. That's awesome. I'm running 100 to 110 miles instead of a little bit more, um, and I think that's kept me just a little bit healthier. Uh, but I've adapted really well to the training, so it's felt, it's felt really good. Tempos have been faster and longer, and uh, long runs have felt much better. And so um, while it's the same training, I've, uh, I've felt better. And so I'm, I'm excited for the race. I'm excited to see what the training translates to because I'll be learning something. Um, having run in trials before, once before, do you think that gives you an edge over less experienced competition in like a marathon? Yes, yes, but it can be, you know, it can be a crutch too. You know, in the, you know, it gives. I certainly feel more confident than I did on the start line in 2016. But as soon as you get too confident at a race like this, 
there are 50 hungry guys ready to jump on that and take advantage of it. And so I do feel more confident, but I think the, the trick for me will be to still approach this race just like any other race, just with the same fire that I had in 2016 and go out there and fight. And, um, and I think that's the only way that, that's the only way you make Olympic teams. Thank you very much. Hey, nice to you guys. Hey, nice What's seeing up? you again. Hey, How are you? Doing great about yourself. Living the dream. You so, sure living, are. Living you my are dream. living the dream. <laughs> so is Ed still your coach? Yes. Right? So um, another four years. Did you guys change much from four years ago? It no. sounded like you had a little bit. Uh, I mean, things adjust, right? But they adjust uh, gradually and slowly. And, uh, you know, we... We adjust each build just a little bit into a marathon, and then we take the build from the most recent successful marathon and kind of use that as the foundation for the build for the next one. And so we've learned some things this build, I think. You know, it, we'll know on Saturday, um, but I think there's been some things that have gone really, really well. Um, in some ways, we've been more conservative in terms of mileage and in terms of intensity in the middle of long runs. But in some things, uh, we've gone faster. You know, some of the intervals have been really, you know, some of my track intervals have been as good as when I was in college in terms of VO2 stuff. And um, my tempos have been better than they've ever been. And so I think in some ways, uh, you know, things are the same. And in some th ways, they're a little different. And, um, you know, the, uh, the riding will be on the wall after... Saturday, and then and then we'll know whether they were good adjustments or bad ones. As you've gotten older, do you do any cross training or yoga yeah. or yeah. light weights? And Absolutely. Stuff like that? I, I mean, I have a whole set I have a whole set of old man exercises that I do before and after running that keep me healthy. You know, I got I have to keep my hips mobile to keep my hamstrings healthy, and I have to stay on top of that kind of stuff. And so, little little drills, warming up, uh, rolling out with vibrating heating massage ball that I love, and and some of that. Stuff stuff works to keep me healthy and I do cross train I cross train two or three times a week I like the okay I'm here with Jared uh, Ward uh, anyway so what do you think about today's race you know there are worse things in the world than bad races so I you know it was I, I think I did everything right at the start and I put myself in a good position and it mile 19 mile 20 I was just tired and my legs my legs were flat and it was just one of those days and so uh, sometimes you have a day and sometimes you don't and and uh, but I'm you know the the crowds are really what kept me going from just calling it quits at 20 miles and worrying about what was next I felt like uh, I got to finish this yep. yeah, there's there's more here than me and uh, you know I want I want my kids to see dad finishing even when it's tough and uh, so there was a lot, you know, while, while uh, for a little bit I was thinking, oh, there's no reason to finish, I found that there, was, there were a lot of reasons to finish. And uh, it was fun to run in with my training partner. I ran about the last three miles with Connor McMillan, and, and that was fun. And uh, I'm going to remember a lot of things about this race. Well, hey, you crossed that finish line, and uh, no matter what anybody says, it's always a great day to cross a marathon finish line. It is. No matter what race. It is. No matter how you do. That's right. I That's can right. Say that I've done plenty of like that. <laughs> yeah, when you do a race to finish, it means everything. Yeah. No matter winning or losing, no matter first place or a thousandth place, especially. Now. Get to the finish line. Yeah. You know, you, today, this, so you'll remember this is one of your greatest races just because you finished. Want a wanna, wanna battle. You got it. Want a battle. And the you, you, big thing is your kids saw you finish it. And your wife. No matter what you do from here on out, keep. And if you decide you don't want to run anymore, at least you say I finished. I finished. Okay. No, I think there's a few more years. Oh, God, yeah. You're a young man. You keep running like this guy till you're 40. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> But hey, congratulations, and you're such a joy to talk to. Hey, thank you. And, uh, you know, um, I think it's great you're still out here, and uh, you have plenty more races. You're a crowd favorite, so good luck with everything. Hey, thank you. And uh, you're one of my heroes being out here, man. Hey, Probably. thank you very much. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Yes, it's part of the route. It'll be on fire. It'll be ignited. Do you know and what? It, when I heard it's going to be uh, I mean, lit, I was like, wow, that is going to be awesome. It's going to remind me of my first Olympics when I saw the torch be, I mean, being lit, um, and then 2000 and 
2004, 2008, everything like that brings all those memories and I think would be fantastic because this is the Olympics that I actually seriously almost made it. I made it the finals in Kenyan trials, but I was still inexperienced. I didn't know how to run with the professionals. And so it would be it's fun to be back in Atlanta, the city that I almost made the team for. And I came after missing that team in 2006. I mean, yeah, 1996, I said, I'm going to come back stronger and actually I'm going to make the next Olympics. And I made it in 2000. So this was the place that gave me um, that fire and, and that desire to go to the Olympics. Not getting ahead of ourselves here, right. but in, in, in Tokyo, the marathon won't be in Tokyo. It'll it's going to be Sapporo. Sapporo. What do yes. you think of that? Uh, I have mixed emotions about that, uh, mixed feelings about it, because one of the things that we like about the Olympics is we, like, okay, think about Atlanta in 1996. If Atlanta, first of all, when they're pitching, they said, we're Atlanta, we're going to showcase our major landmarks in the city. This is what you're going to see in Atlanta. That is what the fans are going to be lining on the street in Atlanta to see, right? And then suddenly, actually, it's going to move to Seattle. So is that still going to be... What are, what, what are the people in Atlanta going to feel? So it's the same thing with people in Tokyo. I feel like they, you know, being moved away is dropping away, is taking away that excitement. And the Olympics being in the city that is hosting the Olympics should be everything, including that last day of the Olympics. But they've done this supposedly for your safety, for your welfare, to make sure that you and other runners don't collapse in the heat of Tokyo. But it's the same thing in Sapporo. What is the t what is the difference in degrees? Even five. if it's five degrees, is that going to make a difference? No. And athletes can actually prepare better in conditions like in where it is a little five degrees hotter than even in Sapporo. Because the same preparation and same feeling, you're going to feel the same thing in the race day. Hi here, Meredith Hello. with Atlanta Track Club. Yes. Um, wanted to fast forward to Saturday. How excited are you to race here in Atlanta? And what are you most looking forward to on that 26.2 mile um, throughout Atlanta neighborhoods and communities? It's going to be fun. Um, you know, the thing I've been training and thinking about this race, and not just only the, the quest to make six Olympics, but the fact that I'm lining up with the best America I've offered, you know, in there, those who have entered into this race, and all of them are going to be trying to go to the Olympics. They are vying for that spot. It's going to be fun to be part of it. And Atlanta is special for me because I've come here twice now. I've run Peachtree twice. I've won once. I think not a lot of people over here can say, you know, they've come to Peachtree and won. So, and so I feel like I know Atlanta very well. Uh, you know, the, the fans are amazing. And once you win in Atlanta, they will never forget forget about you. They know about they know you. Even the mayor, I met the mayor today and she still remembers the person that won in 2018. So I feel like I'm back home now in Atlanta. As many times as you've been to the Olympics, you've heard all the things, the scares and things that might derail Olympics. Yes. Is this coronavirus thing different? Um, uh, you know what though, um, I remember Zika virus when we were going to Brazil, right? And then a lot of people pulled out of Zika and all these things, but we were in Brazil. I enjoyed my time in Brazil. I didn't even, I didn't think about anything like that. But I guess human um, safety and health is number one. But then once they have ruled out that, you know, it's healthy for athletes to go, I am for it 100%. I, I'm, not in t I'm not in favor of boycotting a place because of something, but if it is really dangerous for athletes to go, for sure. Like, for example, World Indoor Championship, that was postponed. That was a good thing because that was going to be in this March. They, we can't just send athletes to go to, um, to China because of that. And so I believe that we have this coronavirus now, and I, it's still a long ways before that. Yeah. And so hopefully before we get to maybe even April or maybe March, I mean, so, or, or May, we might hear something that, you know, this thing is contained and it's not as serious as it is right now. So hopefully things will go together that we are not going to get cancellation or anything like that. Will, will it impact what you do from here? Just Talk about this race just being on the radar. Like what, I mean, how do you sleep, I guess, the next two nights, like getting ready for this thing? Um, not well. I think it's just excitement and energy and nerves and all good things, but it gets tough to um, turn off the mind for these next two days. But I think I'm in a really great spot where 
I've done this before. I know what it takes. I have a lot of experience, which I think is going to go a long way on the course. And, um, in the race, I mean, this race is going to be about decisions and moments that are challenging. And, uh, I've done that in Boston and Jordan, so um, it's not going to be an even pace to fair. It's going to be an effort pace to fair, which I've done in Boston and Jordan. Yeah. So there's a lot of places that I can draw some points from. So that helps me see a little bit. <laughs> Do you think you have a little bit of an upper hand sometimes when it comes to like that marathon smarts? Like when it comes to something like the trials, having been through two of them before, knowing top three is ultimately what matters. But this whole, I guess, like the the field of contenders really is a lot of people who ha have weren't here four years ago. So it's like, do you have an edge in that sense? Or I mean, that's what I tell myself. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I think the marathon is an event where experience just goes a long way. And you know, I have a lot under my belt, so it's great, and a lot um, in tactical races, in racers, championship style races, and so I think that's certainly advantageous, um, you know, but you can always be on the flip side and say, well, I have fresher legs, and I have gusto, because I don't know what's past 20, and um, that just depends how you want to weigh it, so I'm not sure if it gives me a break. How much does Boston play into your plan for Saturday, with just knowing that you've Got another race plan seven weeks later. Yeah, not at all. Not I mean, at all. I, you know, that's a Walt problem. You know, I'm like, hey, coach, you take care of this. Uh -huh. like, head down, do one at a time. Um, and he's managing it. I know he is. And on hindsight, I'm sure we'll get on the other side of this go. Actually, that flu thing worked out okay because he kept it fresh and going forward. And we'll find all of those things. But, um, you know, I trust him and have put a lot of that on his shoulder. So it's, it's super nice that he's uh, been accommodating because most coaches are going to <laughs> and we have we have two minutes two minutes and then we got to get her out. Are you are you are you approaching this uh, Olympic trials any different than past Olympic trials that you've uh, trained for? Yeah, I mean I, I want to get on the team so that stays the same. It's the goal is to get in the top three and. Um, but training-wise, it's focus on one segment. Race-wise, it's run a really great marathon, and that stuff is pretty much all the same. So it doesn't matter. That's the trials, Boston, New York, whatever it might be. So t give us a little bit of the behind the scenes. I remember with like Boston 2018, there's, I think, that story. I think you wrote down some sort of game plan for that race, like the night or two before. When do you actually sit down and like decide on what you're going to do for this race? And then that can change like literally on the starting line so like do you usually stick to what you write out yeah i mean i'll write something out the night before but it's not like cover this move don't do this. it's just stuff that you can control you know like focus on this here you know, i want to attack this part this way always these are my strengths and how can i play to them when it gets hard what am i going to do how am i going to respond um, these parts of the course like are going to be tough how am i going to manage myself and so it's writing down things that are going to happen no matter what it's not necessarily like well if emily goes or if i feel like this um, it's it's pretty specific to things that are going to be controllable no matter what for me the cauldron from the 1996 olympics is going to be lit for the race any kind of inspiration that you can draw from seeing the flame and going by it a couple of times yeah i saw that the other day i think that's really neat it's just a special touch and um, it really speaks to how much thought and effort and every detail has been covered by atlanta track club and i think um, you know i probably won't notice it while i'm out there but i am going to notice how well atlanta track club has organized this thing just by the course and the fluid stations that are set up and just the experience in general so um, hopefully i can take a look at it afterwards and uh, really get to appreciate that and how about the weather conditions that they've arranged for you <laughs> pretty nice yeah i'm not going to complain this looks like uh, ideal running but we'll see in a couple days if it stays that way <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, just how does how does all your experience and all the different races that you've been in, and the trials in Boston and New York City, and how does it how does it play into what's going to happen in your mind on Saturday? I mean, I think it's just a nice thing to have in my pocket. Um, I think it's a race where experience just goes so far, and every time you do one, you learn a little bit more about the event. And there's 26.2 miles of real estate, so there's a lot of things to understand and manage and learn from. Um, so every chance you get to cover the distance is a learning opportunity. So I'm going to put it all into play on Saturday, and hopefully it becomes meaningful. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, we're on tab here. We're at the 
2020 uh, men's and women's Olympic marathon trials and reflecting on my experience uh, running the 80, 1980, 1984, and 1988 Olympic trials where I finished fourth in 1980.